Welcome to the 18th tutorial on Erlang. Today we're going to talk about the application behavior. Basically, the application behavior allows the functionality to start and stop modules as a unit. It's a process that is started at every Erlang runtime system. And like I said, it contains the functionality for controlling the application. For example, the start in the application or stop in the application. It can also access application information. For example, the configuration parameters, which is denoted by the application resource file, which has the extension of .app. So let's get started first of all by creating the application behavior module. First thing we do is create a new Erlang file and if you're using IntelliJ, we select the OTP application and we call this factorial system. So now we have factorial client, the factorial logic, the factorial server and the supervisor which supervises the server and now we have factorial system. The factorial system supervises the factorial supervisor who supervises the factorial server. So when we call factorial system we want it to start the top level supervisor. In our case it is the factorial supervisor. So what we do is we call the factorial supervisor. Supervisor. And we call the start start link function. Start link function. And a period. And to stop, we simply leave it as OK. Basically, OTP will take care of this for us, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, another thing I would like to add is another start method. And this takes no argument and I want to call a function called application start start and I want to send in the name of the module module The reason for this is when I want to start the application, I don't want to call application.start and then type in the module name itself. So in this case, what would happen is I will simply call factorial system.start, which is just an alternative which I find a lot easier and simpler to use. And the same for factorial system stop. I'm not writing another method called stop takes in no parameter argument and what I want to do is call application stop and like before we send it the name of the module and finally we're going to export the new the newly added method so we call start control s to save before we finish we want to add in the application resource file so right click new erlang file and we want to select application resource file and we're going to call this factorial system but it's going to have a different extension to it because this is the factorial system with we're programming and as you can see the factorial system resource file has dot app and the Erlang module has factorial system dot erl now let's go through the factorial resource file right here well just clear this off so we can start afresh now that's cleared, we want to write the metadata about the application itself. Okay. Uh, 
the first thing we write is the application name so we call application comma and the application name will be factorial system and the next thing will be a list the first thing in the list will be an atom and in the atom we want to put various description about application the first part is description itself and it's a string and it's just going to be a one line description of our application so what should we say factorial calculation system YouTube the next step is what we need to write again is version number so VSN this is going to be version 1 of the application oh don't forget to string version 1 of the application next we want modules basically all the modules introduced by the application and we have to remember that a module can only be defined in one application so we're just going to list them all here and we call this the module this is <coughs> called this the module and this takes in a list of all the modules introduced by the application which is the first one is factorial client then factorial logic followed by factorial server real supervisor factorial system and I do believe that is every module introduced by this application the next step is to list all the registered process started in this application and currently we don't have any registered process so we call register and we supply an empty list the next step is to write applications basically all the applications which must be started before this application is allowed to start and by default we want kernel and std leave so application So we want application and we supply the two default process which is kernel, kernel and std leave. This basically have to come with every application you have. The next part is MOD. MOD specifies the application callback module and a starting argument. Basically this is the entry point to the application itself and the entry point we want is factorial system and it takes no argument at all the final part is ENV ENV is basically configuration parameters used by the application and we're just going to leave this empty so now we have our factorial system and a factorial system application resource file the next step is to rebuild our project and we run the application first of all let's check out all the loaded applications on the system application loaded applications and we have kernel and std lib running so let's start our factorial system start and we have factorial server starting factorial supervisor starting 
Now let's go factorial factorial client and let's give it an argument. Let's go factorial of six. And we have seven hundred and twenty. Now let's crash it to generate an error report. And we have an exception error report. We also have factorial server starting back. Now let's test it again by calling factorial of three. We have six. So after starting the application and seeing it run, we can now first of all check all the loaded applications. We have factorial system, the description, and we have the version number. The next step is to stop the application by calling factory system stop and we have an information report that the factory system has been terminated and if we try to stop it again we should get an error the factory system hasn't started yet but the thing is if we check application loaded applications we still have factory system the information is stored inside the internal database of the application controller. What we can do is we can unload it by calling application unload and we give it the name of the ap application we want which is the factorial system. And let's check if we still have it in the system. No. So we finally have kernel and std lib and the factorial system is gone. Also, another thing we can do is let's call let's start our application back again. And we can check it's loaded. The next thing is we can stop our application we know it stopped and this time we call application which application which applications and as you can see it's gone from application which applications basically it's all application that's currently running so instead of using application loaded applications we can use application which applications thanks for tuning in today in the next tutorial i might tidy things up and go over any other things i might have missed or we might just proceed to mnesia which is erlang database you see amnesia or mnesia i'm not sure how it's pronounced and that is what we're going to do next week and after that we get into erlang web development and how to use erlang on a website See you next time.